This video is going to discuss the process for moving files from SiteOps to OpenSite Designer. Um, not really a process that we are actively supporting at this time, but it is uh, possible. So first, there's some things that don't translate over. Uh, parceling, a parceling areas don't translate over. Pond objects don't go directly over, um, and grading constraints. So everything else works fairly well. So in this example, if I had a some grading there that's represented by those landscape areas and the grading constraint area, if I want to maintain that when I go into open site, then I will need to um, change this into something other than a grading constraint. So I'm going to change that to just an other uh, landscape or other undefined object and um, give it um, the same slope and keep the ele elevation criteria there. And that'll fairly well replicate what was there and should translate over fine. So it's a pretty straightforward process. Um, we're going to make two exports. First, we're going to um, export over the land XML for the existing grading as a tin and uncheck everything else. And save it right here. We'll just call that uh, ex uh, site ops existing. save that. And then we need to export the SiteUps file as well. So then we'll use our SiteUps export for that. And we'll put that in the same place. And then we'll switch over to um, OpenSight Designer. And I'm in a 3D file. I created a 3D file here to import the terrain. And it's a kind of a traditional workflow there. We're going to create our terrain in a 3D file and we're going to create our design in a 2D file. So first I'm going to just import this uh, terrain here into a 3D file. So I'll go to terrain, um, terrain from from file and import that. We want to make sure that we set our uh, feature definition there to be uh, existing contours. Feature definitions are very important in uh, OpenSight. And we're going to set this to source and, des and definition. And then we're going to import that. <coughs> And I'll save settings on that file. I'm going to switch over two-dimensional file here. So empty uh, 2D file. And uh, I'm going to import my site ups here. For that, we'll go to our site menu. And we have a button for that, so site ups file import. We'll import that. That'll take just a second. Extents. And um, best practice here is to then um, close. Um, Open Site Designer and reopen it so that we're sure that it clears the memory there. And now we'll just reopen that uh, file. All right, so once that's back open, we can reference our terrain model in.
make sure we make that active. So I'm going to pick it, make that the active terrain. And we should be uh, good to go. Now, as you can see, our pond is a little out of, out of whack, whack there because it doesn't really import the pond. It just imports um, uh, pad areas that were the um, critical points on the pond, the bottom, uh, toe of the slopes, edges of the berms. Um, and then we could go back and adjust those if we needed to. But um, and the other probably critical thing that it doesn't do currently is um, doesn't set the feature definitions on um, objects. So that could be important as you go through things. It does maintain the finished floors if you had set them. But um, feature definitions are not set. So it's probably a good idea to, if, if you were going to um, take these through to a finished design and actually create a 3D model from all, all this stuff here, probably would be good to um, maybe go, I'm, I'm just picking all the buildings right now, all the common common things here. And um, I'm just going to set the feature definitions on those all at once. I'm going to set it to site building. And all that does is make sure that the proper um, uh, template features are applied to things as you uh, go through the uh, process. So, you know, that would also pertain to things like truck docks and uh, drives as, as well. No feature, de no feature definitions. So you would, would want to make sure that you go through here and uh, set those on everything. Um, and then for... And, we would need to grade that just a little bit here to uh, all that stuff is still there. It's just kind of um, in, in transition there. So it will come back and look prop proper here after the first grading. Yep. Um, and then um, if we wanted to get our pond back, into some kind of semblance of looking like the pond we had, we would have to have remembered the things like the um, what the bottom elevation was, and then what the pond configuration was. Like perhaps the um, uh, distances from the bottom to to the top, and we could go through here, and we could set all these grades. Um, on these things. Um, so if that's the bottom, um, so that's, yeah, that's the bottom there and um, we probably want that to be at whatever ele elevation it was at in the um, in the original. So for instance here I happen to know that that was like at an elevation of uh, 100 feet. So we'll go ahead and set that. And then I know the uh, berm here was, you know, probably at about a 2% slope. And it was probably at an elevation of somewhere between 104 and 104 and a half. Now if I want these to emulate that I'd have to go back through here and say okay I want this toe from here to the toe I want that to be a 3 to 1 slope. And then same thing going down to the bottom. So there I want that to be a 3 to 1 slope. And this would just better define the grading as all. Well.
And then, of course, I'd have to recheck some link heights there to get rid of the retaining walls. So on the inside toe of the slope, I would want to go ahead and um, set those link heights to be zero. And then let me check the... So now that better simulates my pond.